Good morning, everybody. Hello and welcome to Connections. Praise God for another day, for another opportunity to come with you and, and gather around the good Word of God. We are excited about today and we're excited about what God is doing here in these last days before the catching away of the church. We are so blessed to be a part of it. Amen. Well, I trust you've had a good week. I know that we have here. We've had some good daily broadcasts. Our Wednesday night service was our healing service, and uh, the Lord blessed that. If you didn't get a chance to see that, check it out. You can see the healing service uh, two ways. You can go to our webpage, connectionspw.org, and check it out there. Or, of course, you can check it out on Facebook. Praise the Lord. There's Brother Christian. Good morning, sir. Hallelujah. Others are logging on. We're going to have a good time today. Praise God. Well, you know it's Sunday, right? So for us here at Connections, we take a moment to read Psalm 91 out loud and declare our faith concerning ourselves, our church family, and our, our own family, just declaring God's supernatural protection for our lives. So if you have your Bible, let's go over to Psalm 91. There's Brother Christian saying good morning. Let's go over to Psalm 91 and make our faith declaration today. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for this psalm. I'm sure you are as well. I love reading this. Hallelujah. And it's such a blessing to do it with, uh, the, with the church family gathered around. We're all declaring, releasing our faith together. Praise the Lord. Psalm 91. All right. You ready? Let's read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. Father, we just thank you today for Psalm 91. We receive it for ourselves and our children, our grandchildren. We receive it for the Connections Church family. Father, thank you for angels that have been given charge over us. They're with us all the time. They're always around us and protecting us. Father, uh, 10,000 on one hand right, uh, and then another thousand on the other. That's 11,000 people, but Father, it will not come nigh us. Thank you that no evil will befall us. Father, thank you for being with us, for protecting us, for delivering us, for honoring us. You are so good. We receive it today in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for Psalm 91 and divine protection. Amen. Hallelujah. There's Brother Adam. Good morning, Brother Adam. Praise God. Well, last week we started a new series called Knowing God. And last week we talked about three in one and how we looked at how the Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one. We looked at an egg and we gave a couple of different uh, illustrations. Today I want us to look at what I'm calling the ultimate Father. How God Almighty is the ultimate Father. And I want us to go to James chapter 1 and verse 17 to begin this teaching today. There's a lot of misconceptions about God. There's a lot of lies that are being told about God. Uh, I've, I've said this for years. God could take humanity to court for, for, uh, for defamation of character and win. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He could because so many people say things about him. They have no idea what they're saying. They don't know him. And the first way that you can, can really get to know God and know him accurately is through the word of God. Amen. This is, this is our, our place we go to to find out who God is, what he's like, what he's about, 
What does he think? How does he feel? And uh, so the Bible is our guideline in this area. Of course, it is in all areas. Uh, so if we really want to know God, we've got to keep the word first place. And so I want us to center in today on God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, how he is the ultimate Father. Praise the Lord. James chapter 1 and verse number 17. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, let's take this verse and, and put it into two sections here. The first section is this. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and it comes down from the Father. All right? So that's the first section. The second section is that he's the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You know what that, that's saying? You and I would say it like this. He's not about to change. He is, God cannot change. He's not even getting close to change. He won't even change just a little, little bit. He is so perfect. There's no need in him changing and altering anything. He will never change one iota. He's not about to change. Well, it's important that, the, that the, this verse gives us these two truths. Number one, every good and perfect gift comes from Father. And number two, he's not about to change. That's so important. Only good things come from from your heavenly father all right whatever is in your life that is good it came from god amen it came from your heavenly father and our god if you're a born again christian our god is the ultimate father what, what do i mean by that i mean he is the best dad anybody could ever have if you had a natural father and he was good to you you know and that that's awesome that's a blessing but your good father pales in comparison to your heavenly father. He is the best dad ever. He is the ultimate father. And every good gift, every perfect gift comes from him. So you look around your life, examine. You say, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Well, they came from God Almighty. It came from your heavenly father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I love teaching on some of these things because... Sometimes I can sense that we're, we're uh, petting the cat backwards. <laughs> we're, we're, we're plowing new ground. We're going opposite of some things that we've been taught, some things we've thought and felt. I'm telling you, your heavenly father is a good father. In fact, my wife, many times, I've noticed this about Leanne. When she starts to pray, she'll begin with, you're such a good, good father. Now, not, not because it's a song that's popular, but my wife has a revelation that God is her father and he's good. And, and she'll always say, you're a good, good father. She always says it twice because she has a revelation that God is a good, good father. You have to say it twice. I like, he's just that good. Praise the Lord. So what I want us to do, I want us to look at three areas uh, about God in the word that prove to us, that show us that he is the ultimate father. The first one is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6. So let's go over to 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. And just one verse here. Verse number 17. First Timothy 6, 17. Our God is a good, good father. He's the ultimate father. There's no dad that could ever be better than him. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Three reasons why we know that God Almighty is a good, good father. He's the ultimate father. Here's the first one. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Look at that last part again. But in the living God, which giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Point number one, God the Father is generous. Yeah, right, generous. <laughs> God the Father is generous. He is so giving. God is not tight-fisted. 
He's not hard to get things from. God's hand is open wide. He is generous. He is generous. Praise God. There are many Christians who feel guilty for enjoying the good things of life. Hallelujah. That's right. I know growing up Pentecostal, we felt if we start feel good, good, good about something, we start feeling bad because you're not supposed to feel good. You're not supposed to enjoy life. There are many Christians who feel guilty for enjoying the good things of life. I believe with all my heart as I've come to know God, that makes our Father sad. That makes him sad. He wants us to enjoy the good things that come from him. He richly gives us all things. Praise God. I, this is just awesome. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God wants us to enjoy life. And he's given us an abundance. Praise God. This, this verse reveals the heart of our Father to us. He is so generous. Praise God. So he gives us richly and he just, he, you know, when I, when I grew up in church, uh, we had some good things, we had some bad things, but, but one of the, the concepts that we had was that God was mean, that he was just in a bad mood all the time, and just the least little thing would tick him off, and so you had to walk lightly and just watch over your shoulder. You weren't sure what God was going to do today, because that was one of our phrases, where well, you just never know what God's going to do which was an indictment against his character because he, we didn't think he was reliable. He might get mad. You know, you might tick him off. And, and it's hard to get stuff from him. It's hard to convince God. So we, we really didn't pray. We just begged. We pleaded and we begged. But this verse tells us that he richly gives us all things to enjoy. This is the heart of our Father. He is generous. Praise God. Number two, let's go over to Psalm 91. And I know that that we just read Psalm 91 as our faith declaration, but I want to go back there. It, it's so good to really know God. It, it's so good to spend time with Him and really getting to know Him and know His heart because there's so many lies. There's so much that's told about Him that's just absolutely a lie. And once you get to know Him, you just look at people like, how can you say that? How can you say that about my Father? In the natural, if you knew my dad and you came to me and said something bad to me about my dad, I would correct you. I would say, no, that's not Frank Flynn. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't say that. You don't know my dad. I do. All right. I would defend my dad in the natural. Well, we need to defend our Heavenly Father. When people talk bad about him, we need to say, well, well, wait, and not be mean about it, but just say, look, you don't know him. All right. You need to spend more time with him and study the word. Because he's not that way. Our God is the ultimate Father. He's generous. He gives us all things richly to enjoy. He's a good Father. Number two, Psalm 91. Let's read verses 7 through 16 again. I want you to see some things about our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he, your heavenly Father, shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. That is Satan, all of his demonic kingdom right there. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Point number two proves that our God is the ultimate Father, is that our God, our Father, is our protector. Any good father is going to protect their children. And our Father, the ultimate Father, protects us. He keeps us safe from all harm. Praise God. Now, there are many scriptures in the Bible that tell us that God will protect us. But th these right here that we read in Psalm 91 are some of my favorites. And here's what the Bible declares about your father. 
Here's what your father says. He says, I will be with you. I will deliver you. I will honor you. I will answer you. I'll be with you in trouble. Hallelujah. I'm going to rescue you. You get into trouble, I'm going to be there. I'm going to get you out, and I'm going to protect you from evil. He is the ultimate father because he has the ability to protect all of us at the same time. It is in the heart of your father. This is a word for somebody. It is in the heart of your father to protect you. You've had fear trying to come upon you because of this COVID-19 deal. You've seen people with masks and fear tries to come upon you. Your father, it is in the heart of your father to protect you from all evil. He is a good, good father. He loves you. He's given his angels charge over you. He's going to hear your prayers. He's going to answer them. He's going to honor you. With long life, he'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. You're not going to die early. This thing's not going to take you out. With long life, he'll satisfy you. It is in the heart of your father to protect you. What a good, good father we have. Praise God. Praise God. All right, number three. Let's, here we're here in Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 34. Go back a few pages to Psalm 34 and verse number eight. Praise God. The ultimate father, really knowing God. You know, I think that's, that's one of the reasons that when Jesus came along, he called God Father. And that man, that makes the religious people so upset. How, how dare you say that? In fact, the Bible says in Galatians that we have a spirit in our heart that cries out, Abba, Father, Daddy. That's, that's amazing that, that the, unit, the God who created the universe is our Papa. He's our Dad. And we have this spirit that cries out, Abba, Father. This is how to know God. It's not knowing him as the creator of everything, which he is, but his heart is that he has the heart of a father. Praise the Lord. Psalm 32, verse, Psalm 34, I'm sorry, Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Many do not know this, but the goodness of God is a major truth in the Bible. Number three, God the Father is good. He is good. This is a powerful, powerful point. This is a powerful truth. It is a major truth. All right, if you've never studied on the goodness of God, get your concordance, type it in, your iPad, whatever, however you study and you will discover that the goodness of God is not a minor theme, but it is a major theme throughout the scriptures. The Lord is good, okay? But you must taste for yourself in order to see. I like how this begins. Oh, taste and see. Have you ever tasted something and you went, oh, 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 or mm, mm, mm. What does that mean? That is describing the undescribable. <laughs> mm, or, oh, oh. Here, try this, right? You've got to taste it for yourself and see that it's good. Well, you're going to have to taste for yourself and see that your father is a good, good father. And once you do, what, what, what else happens when you, when you eat something that's really good? And you go, oh, your eyes light up. You go, oh, oh, right? Well, that's what happens when you taste for yourself and see that your Heavenly Father is good. Your eyes light up. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, He is so good. He's so good. Now, your, your Father God is good all the time and everywhere. That's important. He's not just good in spots. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I just saw some things that made me, made me laugh. He's not just good sometimes, he's good all the time, and he's good everywhere. He doesn't just favor spots, he's good all the time, and he's good everywhere. Hallelujah. God is completely and perfectly good. Now, remember James 1, 17? There's no variableness, there's no shadow turning with him. Your father has no evil in him. There's no evil, there's no bad, there's no darkness 
in your father. That's an important point. Therefore, he cannot do bad or bring evil. A good God does not do bad things. A good God doesn't bring evil things. Hallelujah. A good God does good things. This is such a simple revelation of God, but it's so profound because there's so many lies taught about our God. Well, he brought this COVID-19. He brings tornadoes. He brings hurricanes. He br God doesn't bring all that. He doesn't bring all that. Jesus himself said that he came to give us life that more abundantly. That is the devil who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God does not need to bring evil. The devil does that. God doesn't need to bring bad. The devil does that. And the devil is self-employed. If your father brought evil, listen to me. Get a hold of this. If your father brought bad things into your life, if he brought evil into your life, and the devil brings bad and evil into your life, you don't stand a chance. You might as well quit right now because you don't have a chance. If God Almighty, your Heavenly Father, and Satan are teaming up against you, you're, you've had it. You're done. You're done. You're wiped out. But our God is our ultimate Father, and He is good. And there is no bad. There's no evil in Him. Now you say, well, there's scriptures that say, I know, I know, but it's because we don't understand, or you don't understand the scriptures before, the scriptures after. But God is good, and there's no darkness in him. All right, let's prove that again. 1 John chapter 1 tells us that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. No darkness. God, your Father, is only good, and he only does good. Praise the Lord. Don't let that be too simple for you. That needs to be a bedrock revelation that you base your life on. Hallelujah. So don't believe the lies about your ultimate father. He has always been good, and he always will be good. There's, no, there's not going to be any changing in him at all. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God blesses the evil with good. It, he reigns on the just and the unjust. Reigns a good thing. God is blessing the sinner. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God's blessing the sinner today. Why? Because the Bible says the goodness of God brings people to repentance. That's Bible. I know we've been taught different, but the Bible says it's the goodness of God that brings repentance. It didn't say the wrath of God, the meanness of God. It's his goodness. God overwhelms people with goodness, and they get saved. My earthly dad's a perfect example of that. Man, he was out playing in the honky-tonks and doing all kinds of stuff. And God healed him of gangrene, and God blessed my dad, and he just, he just wept. He just like, I can't take this anymore. Why would God be so good to me? Why would he love me? And my dad gave his life to Jesus because the goodness of God brought him to repentance. Praise the Lord. That's the gospel, my friend. That's the good news. And I'm not backing down on it because I know my Bible, and I've spent enough time with my father to know he's good. Hallelujah. A good father does good things. Now listen to this question. This will blow religion out of the water. How could a good God have a bad plan for your life? See, people are afraid to get close to God because they're afraid if they get real close, then they're going to be accountable because God's going to reveal to them his plan for their life. And we, we, want, we don't want to get real close now. We want to be close enough to escape hell, but we don't want to get real close. Because he might tell me to do something I don't want to do. How can a good God have a bad plan for your life? God has an awesome plan for your life. And the closer you get with him, the more you know him, the more you're going to see that his plan for your life will put a smile on your face. It is a good plan. Hallelujah. People who do not believe in healing do not know the goodness of the Father. People who do not believe in prosperity do not know the goodness of the Father. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's go over to Psalm 31. We're here in Psalm 34. Look at Psalm 31 and verse 19. Do you remember when, when uh, Moses was praying and he said, uh, I want to see your glory? And God answered him and he said, I am going to allow my goodness to pass. And you're going to see my goodness. A lot of Christians right now are praying for the glory. 
They're praying to see a cloud, to hear thunder, to see lightning, to see fire. But God said it is his goodness that is his glory. The goodness of God is the glory of God. When God's been good to you, he has shown you his glory. That awesome deal you got on that brand new car and you got all those discounts and discount upon discount, that was the goodness of God, that was the glory of God. You know that, that deal that turned out to your, to your favor, to your good? That was the glory of God showing up. And when we see God's glory, what, what do we say? Man, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. If you're praying to see God's glory, look for His goodness. Because His goodness is His glory. That was, that was free. Hallelujah. That, was, that was just extra there. Psalm, Psalm 31, verse 19. Now... <laughs> How do I want to set this up, Lord? Okay, let's just read it. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. First part of that verse again. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Now, this shows you your father in his heart. You want to know God? This verse does it right here. Your ultimate father has so much goodness, he has to store it up. He has to stockpile his goodness. Wow. Why? Why does he have to store up his goodness? Because he has so much of it and because he, he, he's, he's looking for a good receiver. When you're in religion, you're not taught to receive. You're, you're taught to be tight because God's tight. But once you get to know him, you get to be a good receiver. God has so much goodness, he has to st store it up because he, he can't find anybody to receive. <laughs> I'm a receiver. How about that? Are you? I'm a good receiver of the goodness of God. What a, what a, I, what a thought this is. Here's something for you to spend time on your, with your imagination on. God has so much goodness for you that it's stored up. He has stored up goodness for you. When something good happens to you, just say this. Just say, well, there's more where that came from. <laughs> there's more where that came from. I know my father. Oh, that's just, that's just the start of many blessings because he's so good. Amen. This verse, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. You have not yet experienced all of the goodness your Father has for you. <laughs> you have just begun to experience the goodness of your Father. I don't care how much goodness you've already experienced. I'm telling you, God's got it stockpiled up, and you and Him are just getting started. There's more where this came from. You have yet to really tap into how good your father is. If you want to know God, I encourage you to do a study on the goodness of God. It will build faith in you. It'll put a smile on your face. It'll make you sing a song. And it will help get rid of religion. I believe that the revelation of the goodness of God is, one of the, is a fast track to getting rid of the lies of the enemy about God. And it's the fast track to getting rid of religion. Because the fundamental revelation that's true about God, your Father, is that He's good. He's good. Amen? Mark eleven twenty four 24 says that we are to believe that we receive when we pray. How easy it is to receive from your Father when you know He's good. When you know His hand is stretched out, it's, He's not tight fist, His hand's open wide, He says, here it is, it's yours. I made it for you. I had this in mind for you. There you go. Faith just rises up when you spend time knowing the goodness of your Father. Hallelujah. You really want to know God? He's generous, He's protective, and He's good. This is truly who your God is. Father, I pray for the people today in Jesus' name that you would just take this message and speak it to them over and over again. I pray, Father, for a fresh revelation for all of us of how good you are, that you're generous, you're protective, and you're good. You are the ultimate Father. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being good to us. 
Father, thank you for a fresh revelation. Help, open our eyes, Lord, to see just how magnificent your goodness is, just how great it is. Father, thank you that you love us and that you're good. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., we'll see you as we begin a new series. You have a blessed, awesome day. If, by chance, you've listened to this message and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today's your day. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want to know how good God really is. It's just something so simple as that. You see, God is simple. He's good. He's loving. He's kind. If you'd make that prayer, just say that prayer in your heart. Welcome to the family of God. And welcome to a wonderful journey of the goodness of God. Amen. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Have a blessed day. Just live in God's goodness all day long. We'll see you tomorrow.